What's happening, everybody? On today's show, Hugh Freeze taking over play calling duties at Auburn. Alabama's running back room gets a little bit thinner. And we'll catch up with both Tim Tebow and Greg McElroy. Locked on SEC starts right now. You are locked on SEC, your daily podcast on the Southeastern Conference. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome into Locked On SEC. It's great to have you guys along. Uh, this episode presented to you by our friends at LinkedIn Jobs. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high stakes wager for your small business. That's why LinkedIn Jobs is helping you find the right people for your team faster and for free. Go post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash Locked On College. Terms and conditions apply. I'm Chris Gordy. Thanks for making Locked On SEC your first listen every day. Shout out to our everydayers. We're free and available wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network covering your team every day. Uh, we got plenty to catch you up on. I mean, these days it's just there's no um, lack of stories across the SEC. Every day we wake up, there's something new going on. So uh, we'll bring you up. Uh, we, we did catch up with Tim Tebow a couple, uh, uh, about a week or so ago. And so we'll bring you that interview. I've been promising you that. And then we also caught up uh, during the playoff season with Greg McElroy, McElroy just a few minutes talking about Oklahoma and Texas being SEC ready. So we'll bring you that as well. But we got plenty to discuss. So let's dive into it. Let's go around the conference. Boots out to the right. Takes the handoff. Throws inside of the ball. What a catch. Around the conference. And our first stop today, we stop off over at Auburn as Hugh Freeze is reportedly going to give up or rather take over play calling duties. Uh, fired his OC, Philip Montgomery, recently. I don't even know if we talked about that on the show. There's been so much going on, but Philip Montgomery out and Hugh Freeze looking to take over play calling duties on offense in 2024. Freeze did call his own plays during his first three head coaching stops, Arkansas State, Ole Miss, and Liberty, and always thought to be one of the better play callers in all of college football. As Chris Lowe at ESPN pointed out, Hugh Freeze, um, again, respected as one of the best play callers in the country and Auburn struggled offensively this year, finished 11th in the SEC in scoring offense. They were held to 20 or less points in six games. Hugh Freeze admitted uh, at one point to being a little bit more involved in the offense at some point this year, but criticized the game plan in the Music City Bowl, lost to Maryland, and that led to Philip Montgomery getting fired. So Hugh Freeze announced Friday um, Montgomery got fired, and now he's taking it back into his own hands. And with Freeze taking over play call, the plan now is to move Kent Austin to quarterback's coach after he served in a quality control role at Auburn last year and special assistant to the head coach. Austin's a former Ole Miss quarterback. He was with Freeze at Liberty as co-OC and QB coach there and also worked in the CFL as a head coach and GM. So uh, we'll see. Auburn's offense has to get better next year. It must. And so Hugh Freeze taking that uh, task under his wing into 2024 we'll see what it looks like all right over at alabama their running back room gets a little bit thinner now look every time i say something like this a lot of alabama fans get perturbed i'm not taking a shot we're not saying alabama's running back room sucks they obviously have some great talent in there and jam miller and you know some of the other young guys uh, justice haynes they'll be leaned on but jace mcclellan announced yesterday he is heading to the nfl draft a few Alabama people I talked to said it was a little surprising. They thought McClellan would come back for another year. Spent four seasons with the Tide. Was their starting to running back this year. Posted on social media, he said, after some long talks with my family, I believe the next chapter of my life is here now. And I've officially decided to declare for the NFL draft. Thank you, Bama Nation, and roll Tide. Um, McClellan come, coming off his best season in an Alabama uniform. Had one year of eligibility remaining. But he is moving on. And this comes on the heels of Roydell Williams, who hit the transfer portal a couple days ago. And if you just look at what Alabama had production-wise last year, their two leading rushers uh, in the backfield were Jace McClellan with almost 900 yards and Roydell Williams with 560. Jalen Milrow was their third leading rusher with over 500 yards rushing. And then you got Jam Miller. He had 41 carries on the year. Justice Haynes had just 25 so those figure to be 
you know, two of your big pieces coming back, Jim Miller and Justice Haynes, and they could be very good together, but um, just a little surprise. I thought one of McClellan or Roydell Williams would be back next year and kind of be the guy. Of course, I'll have a new center with Seth McLaughlin transferring out, so it'll be a new look uh, on that offense with a lot of pieces on that Alabama offense. Jermaine Burton declared for the draft, so uh, Jalen Miller is back, so that's the, the biggest part. So expect uh, expect Alabama's offense to be good as always, but just going to be a lot of new faces back there, uh, a lot of inexperienced guys, particularly in the backfield. Unless you know, maybe they look to the portal or bring somebody in. But they've recruited well there, brought in a couple of highly talented running backs in this recruiting class to join those guys. Uh, Malachi Moore uh, confirmed. We, we'd heard reports a couple days ago that it was going to happen, but he confirmed yesterday that he is coming back to Tuscaloosa for another season. Chris Lowe had uh, shared that Moore was expected to return. So he'll be a 50-year super senior next year. And the Alabama defense gets a big-time player who has been playing ever since he was a freshman. He's playing like 52 games over four seasons. This past year had 52 tackles, five passes defended, five interceptions. So Malachi Moore, a big get turn turn for Alabama this upcoming season. Over at LSU, a little bit of surprise. They lost uh, Makai Wingo to the NFL draft as an interior defensive lineman. Now Mason Smith, one of their uh, big defensive tackles, announcing he is heading to the NFL draft. He leaves after playing in just 22 games, missed all of 2022 with su suffering an injury in that season over against Florida State and uh, missed this year's Florida State game as well. Finally got in there and had a pretty good season, but... Uh, a lot of people thought maybe Mason Smith might come back or might need to come back for another year at LSU. But 12 games this year, recorded a career-high 28 tackles. His best season came back in 2021. He was a freshman at five tackles for a loss and four sacks in just nine games played as a freshman. He did have a sack in LSU's Rely Quest Bowl win over Wisconsin. So uh, best of luck to Mason Smith. But uh, maybe LSU could convince either Mason Smith or Makai Wingo to come back because it's a lot of uh, – they get very thin on the interior of that defensive line now heading into next year. All right, a few other notes as we uh, keep it going around the conference. Um, another Auburn note here uh, over at uh, Auburn. Running back Brian Batty, or Batty who uh, announced he had entered the transfer portal this week, uh, decided to withdraw his name. Spent three seasons originally at South Florida, broke out in 2022. And a sign-on with Auburn at 51 carries for 227 yards and a touchdown this past year, splitting time with Jarquez Hunter and Damari Alston. But uh, Brian Batty coming back for another year at Auburn. So good news there for them. Over at Mizzou, Eli Drinkwitz getting some good news. Isaiah Hastings, former Alabama defensive lineman, has three years of eligibility remaining. He is committed to Mizzou, according to On3 Sports. Hastings was a four-star recruit coming out of, out of high school, number 29 defensive lineman in the country, and uh, made his debut in 2022 against Louisiana Monroe, where he had a tackle. So Isaiah Hastings, big-time D lineman, going from Alabama to Mizzou. Over at Tennessee, they are adding uh, some depth to their secondary as they picked up uh, Jalen McMurray from Temple, a cornerback. So transfer portal look. Tennessee has lost a lot of guys. Tamari McDonald, Danico Slaughter, Brandon Turnage, Wesley Walker, Warren Burrell, and uh, Kamal Haddon's heading to the NFL draft. So a lot of departures there in the secondary. So Jalen McMurray coming over from Temple there um, adds to the group of a couple of signees like Caleb Beasley, Boo Carter, Marcus Corey. So be a new look secondary there at Tennessee next year over at Mississippi State, they're adding to their offensive line in uh, picking up a kid in uh, by the name of Jackson coming over from Texas Tech he uh, played in two games as a freshman saw time in every game He's a former three-star recruit Jacoby Jackson tweeted out yesterday Starkville let's get to work he was the number 75 offensive tackle in the class of 2021. So, again, played three years at Texas Tech, coming over to Mississippi State. Uh, over at Ole Miss, they are set to host a former Alabama linebacker in Kendrick Blackshire. So, 
We'll keep an eye on that one. Maybe another big piece for Ole Miss to add through the portal over at Texas. A.D. Mitchell, I think we mentioned on the show yesterday, but former uh, Georgia Bulldog and Texas wide receiver, he is heading to the NFL draft. So there you have it. Caught up on uh, all the latest going on around the SEC. Coming up next, our conversation with Tim Tebow. He was at a charity event for Allstate. So talked a little bit about the good work he's doing with them and then also hit him with a couple football questions. So that is coming your way here in just a second, our conversation with Tim Tebow. First, I want to remind you guys, this episode is presented to you by our friends over at LinkedIn Jobs. Look, at the start of the new year, every small business is asking themselves the same question. What's the one move I can make that'll take my business to the next level in 2024? LinkedIn Jobs knows that your success all depends on the team you surround yourself with. And that's why LinkedIn Jobs has created the tools to help you find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. LinkedIn isn't just another job board. They have a vast network of more than a billion professionals which is going to make it easy uh, for you to find the best people to hire. Hiring is easy when you have that many quality candidates. 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. That's why small businesses rate LinkedIn jobs number one in delivering quality hires against leading competitors. Uh, go check them out, LinkedIn jobs. Go post your job for free. It's linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college. Go post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Going along here, Locked On SEC. Thank you guys for making us your first listen every day. Shout out to our everydayers. Keep coming back and checking us out each and every day. All right. Well, about a week ago over in New Orleans during Sugar Bowl, we were able to catch up with the great Tim Tebow. He was doing some great work with the the AFCA uh, Good Works team, which you guys know we talk about that every year at SEC Media Days. They always pick some guys on all the different universities to represent all the great leadership qualities on and off the field. Um, so we caught up with Tim Tebow at the Allstate event, talked a little bit about that with him, and then also hit him with some football questions. So here was our conversation with the one and only Tim Tebow. Pleasure to be joined by the one and only great uh, Tim Tebow here in New Orleans for a special event today with uh, Son of a Saint and, of course, the Allstate AFCA Good Works team. We talk about this every year at uh, yes. SEC Media Days. Matt Stinchcomb's yep. been involved, yes, and yes. it's it's cool All to have Stinchcomb's have been involved. <laughs> exactly. Are, yeah. It's cool to have you and, and Sam here. Talk a little bit about what the Allstate AFC Good Works team means to you, and how special this event is. Well, it just means so much because there's just so many awards for how someone throws, catches, runs, tackles, but very few for who they are and the impact that they have in their community and around the world. But that's why I just love what all state and the afca good works team is all about because it's about celebrating these 22 young men that have made such an impact in their community and then we get together uh this weekend every year to um really be able to um spend time but then also be able to have a, a good works day and be able to mentor and hang with um some amazing young men um that um are overcoming the challenge of, of not having a, a father in the home and so we're so grateful for what Son of a Saint is doing and, and so grateful for also these 22 young men that you can see how much that they care about these, um, these incredible uh, young men that they're mentoring and just having fun and cheering them on. Um, but it's because this is who they are and they do this all over the place in their communities and around the world. And so getting the chance to get together um, and create those relationships, community, um, is just so special because we're, we're meant for relationships and community. Yeah, it's, it's great. I mean, this time of year, the awards circuit, a lot of it, it has to do with accomplishments on the field, yeah. but this is one that is truly off the field. And you could genuinely see just being around the guys, no cameras rolling or anything, yes. genuinely enjoying what they're doing, getting to work with the kids. They, they are. And I'll tell you what, if I could had time to give you the bios of these young men, it's crazy. What they're doing is incredible. I mean, they're involved in so many different nonprofits. They're involved in, in so many Thanksgiving drives, Christmas drives. They're involved with so some Many of them have started their own nonprofit. Profits. And it's just, I mean, not only are they excelling on the field, in the classroom, uh, but to me what's most important is, is, is they're making an impact in so many people's lives, especially those that are hurting. 
and in a situation where they need help. And these incredible young men are, are really providing aid to so many people that need it. It's really cool. I got a feeling back in the day, if NIL had been a thing when you were playing, I'm sure Tim T, but you would have made a bit, good bit, but you would have given a whole lot of that back because that's just the, the genuinely good dude you are, right? Well, I, I don't know, but, but hopefully, but it's really cool to see the impact that they're making and then to celebrate them, right? I think it's also important that, that we, we honor that, we celebrate that. There's so much that we do celebrate, um, and many of it rightfully so, how players play in the game, but how much more so the impact that they make. And that's why I love that, that Allstate gets together to celebrate these 22 young men. You know, they'll be in the parade and they'll be celebrating and they'll be at the, um, the Allstate Sugar Bowl and, and that'll be exciting, but it's why they're being celebrated. I think that's also what's so important for us all to remember. Talking with the great Tim Tebow and uh, Tim, a couple football questions, if we could. Yeah. Uh, thought on uh, Georgia, they they kind of had a repeat national championship game a year ago, and this year Orange Bowl just put it on Florida State the other yeah. night. I know Kirby Smart came out after and said, "Look, we got something's got to change here with the opt outs and all that." You have a thought on where what we do, how we fix this? Well, I think there's just so much that is changing right now, and in college sports, that it's just important to look at. I, I think so many different things when the portal opens. Um, I think that's a, important to look at. Um, uh, you know, there's so much changing from the conferences, the realignment, everything. That's just some, also something important to, to, to keep in mind. Um, you, know, um, you know, when the bowl games take place. Um, but I still, I, you know, I, I think that it means a lot to a lot of communities, a lot of hometowns that bring the bowl games in. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm partial. Um, you know, Jacksonville always brought in. You know, we still always know it as the Gator Bowl, right? And, uh, but it was just fun. It still it does a lot for communities. I still know a lot of um, you know, young men really love playing in the bowl games. And I still think there's a special place for that. But I think it's just a lot that needs to, the right people just need to come together and have conversation. And I think that can help a lot of things. I was at the Texas Bowl the other night and got the honor to meet DJ Lagway, who yeah. tremendous college uh, or high school athlete in the Houston yeah. area. Now he's going to Florida where a lot of kids were jumping ship. He held firm and he's going to Florida. Just how excited, at least for Billy Napier, to kind of settle things down after it was kind of trending in the wrong in the wrong direction there leading up to signing. I think he's a he's a big win for Florida. Um, he seems like a great young man. Um, I've had the pleasure of being around him a couple of times. Um, he is not just a, a great athlete, but he also seems like a very special person and a um, uh, very humble young man. Um, someone that's been working hard. Um, Excited that he's a Gator and looking forward to watching him play. Quick thought on uh, this game happening Monday night. Obviously, uh, Texas has had an, an incredible year, and for them to get here and get in to play a, a really good Washington team, you have a feeling one way or another how this is going to play out? Well, I'm really excited. I think it's a fascinating matchup because I think that Texas has one of the best rosters in the country. I also really believe that they're um, a physical team. I've been able to watch a lot of their um, games this season and to see the way that they can physically match up interior with their defensive line, their front seven. Um, but then it's going to be interesting because the one of the strengths for for Washington is their receiving core and Michael Penix Jr. And that's also one of the areas that's not quite as strong for Texas. So that's going to be a fascinating matchup. I think it's going to be back and forth. I really think some of the keys to the game, though, is is it's Yes, the downfield passing game from Washington, but I think it's even a little different than that. I, I would say it's the shifts, the the, um, the motions, the the receiver screens for Washington, and the quick game. I think because to neutralize the pass rush, um, it starts with the running game. If you don't have a running game, what's an extended handoff? Well, it's receiver screens in quick game, and I think that's something that that Washington, I went back and watched it yesterday a lot. They did in the, the conference championship game against Oregon to really get them going, a lot of shifts and motions. And I think that's something that Texas needs to tackle well in space. Because if not, I think Washington can get those playmakers going early. And now that sets up the down the field plays. So that's going to be something early on in the game I'm going to really be focused on. On the other side, Alabama and Michigan, uh, I'll just ask you this way. You buying into any of these rumors that Saban could retire if he wins at all? Uh, I hope not. I love seeing what he's doing. I still think he's um, one of the best in the game. Uh, what he's done this year is incredible. It really is. We say that all the time, but I think it's important that we just really, um, I think, appreciate the greatness that we've seen and we're seeing um, what he's done with this team. I, I don't believe that this roster at Alabama is one of the best that they've had in the playoffs, but it's a team. 
and it's a team that's bought in. It's a team that's improved, and it's one of the, the better, I think, coaching jobs that Saban has done and his coordinators, the way that he's been able to support Tommy Reese, and Tommy has adapted this offense to support Jalen and, and the squad that they have, fascinating job that they've done. And, and also on the other side, you, I mean, got to be impressed with what um, Jim and the entire staff has done with Michigan. So it's going to be really exciting. I think it's one of the most excited I've ever been for both semifinal games. Last one for you. Um, SEC expanding, two yeah. new teams. SEC Nation, you guys go on the Roadhawk side, or you get a couple new venues to try it. I'm so excited. I mean, come on. Like, let's look at the venues that we get to go to. They're, it's, it's, you know, you, you talk about the passion, right, of the SEC. Well, these are a couple more places that have extreme passion, love for the game, love for these athletes, love for what they get to do, and incredible venues. And the Red River rivalry, that doesn't stink either. That'll be pretty fun uh, to be a part of. And I think Florida goes this next year um, to Texas. And uh, so many amazing games. You just, I'm excited to see what happens with, with all the different conferences, right? It's going to be fun. I mean, I, I'm someone that I love keeping the old rivalries, but I'm also excited about some of the new ones that could happen. So it's going to be fun. A lot, lot is happening. I think a lot still to happen, but uh, I know I'm going to enjoy it as a college football fan. He is a great Tim Tebow, again, coming to you from New Orleans at the Allstate AFCA. Good works day and tremendous work. Um, keep doing what you're doing, man. Thank keep you, being you. You do so much great work. Thank you so much for the time today. Absolutely. God bless you guys. Thank you all. Thanks again to Tim Tebow. Uh, still more to come here on Locked On SEC, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, covering your team every day. Coming up next, a couple minutes with Greg McElroy. As we uh, caught up with him down at Sugar Bowl, asked him a little bit about Texas and Oklahoma coming to the SEC. Are they ready? We'll have that for you coming up next. Well, first, this episode presented to you by our friends over at FanDuel. Look, the NFL regular season has wrapped up. But there's still time to get in on all the playoff action with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That is $150 in bonus bets, win or lose. Uh, the app's super easy to use. Go on and check them out. You can head to their website, fanduel.com slash locked on. Uh, once you get signed up, you can download the app and uh, very easy to use. I mean, they got same game parlays. Uh, you can go to the parlay hub. Uh, you can find bets in the new explore tab. Super easy to find everything you want to get in on. Again, it is fanduel.com slash locked on. Make sure you put in that slash locked on. That's going to get you the special uh, promo offer that they got going there. And then again, download the app. Super easy to use. They will make your first bet a layup. It is fanduel. They are the official partner of the NFL. Again, all throughout this uh, postseason in the NFL, make sure FanDuel is uh, your go-to resource for uh, getting on all the action. It is FanDuel.com slash locked on. Check them out today. All right, rolling along here, Locked On SEC. Thank you guys for making us your first listen every day. I mentioned uh, we were down at the Sugar Bowl and then, of course, at the National Championship. And, you know, while there was no SEC team in the National Championship, we still caught up with a lot of folks like Kirk Herbstreit and Reese Davis and Tim Tebow, who you just heard. And so we were able to catch up just a couple minutes with Greg McElroy talking about that Texas team, you know, as they looked um, – you know, they were hoping to beat Washington, get to the championship game with Sark before they come to the SEC. But we talked with Greg McElroy about the uh, the challenges that both Texas and Oklahoma face. And are they SEC ready? That's the big question. Are they ready to compete from day one coming over to the conference? Here was some of our conversation with Greg McElroy. Greg, just a, a quick thought. When the news came that Texas and Oklahoma were coming to the SEC, I think a lot of people wondered, you know, can they be SEC ready? I don't think you could be more SEC ready than what Texas has done this year. Just talk a little bit about where that where the program is and what they're getting prepared for making that jump next year. Well, I mean, it's it's a, it's going to be a leap, um, but at the same time, I mean, Texas they have hired coaches that have a great foundational understanding of one, how to build a program. And they also have a tremendous understanding of what that league requires to be successful. And it really requires teams to be built from the inside out. If you have great playmakers, awesome. That helps a lot. Uh, but if you don't, you better have a great D line and you better have a great offensive line. 
Um, and they, I think, have done a great job. They have the playmakers. But a lot of teams in the Big 12 have the playmakers. That's really not that new. Texas, for a long time, has had elite running back skill, has had elite wide receiver skill, amazing tight ends. They've had that for a long time. But I think what was lacking was the offensive line play. And if you don't believe me, you can just ask Mel Kuyper. <laughs> that has changed. Um, and they've done a really good job with development, too. Because I think for a long time for Texas, and look, I played high school football in the state of Texas. I understand how important high school football is in the state of Texas. And Oklahoma recruits from that talent pool as well. Um, there is such a priority on playing at a high level as a 16, 17, 18-year-old. And there's big high schools, so sometimes you have to pick one sport and you don't get to play multiple sports. So your development is accelerated. Uh, it's also a, a place that has tremendous high school coaching. So your development is accelerated. So when you arrive on campus in college, you're almost a finished product in some cases. And the time in which you play in your in your college career, you, you don't really improve as much as maybe a guy that was under recruited or a guy that came from a place with less resources uh, that grows by leaps and bounds uh, over the course of their college career. So I think they kind of tapped out a little bit and had some players that had tapped out when they were on campus really 10 years ago. And they've now done a better job of really assessing guys that can really develop and improve greatly in their time uh, you know, there it, on the 40 acres. So i um, very excited to see what happens with both Texas and Oklahoma. I think they have the right coaching staffs, and that's where it starts, um, having guys that know how to get it done at the highest possible level. All right, that again, our conversation with Greg McElroy. Thank you guys for making Locked on SEC your first listen every day. Shout out to our everydayers. Come on back tomorrow on the show. We will uh, hoping to have uh, some conversation with Eli Drinkwitz from Missouri. Hopefully we'll bring that to you tomorrow. Uh, for your second listen, Locked on has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Here for you covering all the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked on. Uh, plus our national shows covering every league. So for your second listen, go check out Locked On Sports today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel. I'm Chris Gordy. This has been Locked On SEC. You guys have a great day, everybody. We'll talk to you tomorrow.